everyone and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh and I wanted to review the year-to-date results for the Stock Swoosh Show Live Trading Room. This is Advanced Trader Tracking. We'll go over what that risk is a little bit here. This is from January, beginning in January through today. For year-to-date results, 368,522. So it's been a good year. It's been a solid, solid year and I've been extremely focused this year, and I think that it's, it's showed. It's definitely showed in the results for the room and for myself. So if you'd like more information, you can reach out and email me at melissathestockswoosh.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So there have been 142 winners, 70 losers, six break-even trades, and 218 trades called so far year-to-date. So win ratio 68%. Yeah, and on any given week or any given month, depending on how busy we are, that's pretty much the average will to be between, I'd say, 65 and 80 percent, depending on how many trades we're getting on any given day. And right now, we're getting into the beginning of the fall trading season, and it's going to start to get busy. So we're going to have more gaps. And when it is a busy season, it is definitely a fun time to trade. Yesterday was FTX. It was an amazing call. Um, and a good example, really, of why it is so fun to trade gaps. So earnings season, again, like I said, is a great time to trade. Fall earnings season starts in a few weeks. The class is this weekend if you want to learn before the earnings season period. It's one of those times where I say, you know what? If you want to make money before the holidays, now is the time to do it. Because the market does tend to get slow um, around the holiday period. When there's Christmas and different holidays, uh, people tend to take off. But right now, everybody's working. Everybody's trying to make money before the holidays. Stocks are going to report their quarterly earnings coming up in October and November, and it is definitely a busy time. So going back to the beginning of the year, again, there were days where we don't have any trade. So I'm always looking to qualify the gap based on the gap itself. And again, a gap is the difference between the close and the open. I'll discuss that in another video. But when you're looking to, to trade, you have to find specific things to do. And so I focus each day on one or two picks. So going back to the beginning of the year, we started the year off. SPY required two trades, one trade lost, one worked in here that was a retake. And then you see many of the days here where I have one ticker symbol that's a solid, good, fast, quick trade. We're in and out quickly. You see this here with the Lulu and the Netflix. And again, I tend to stick on one single symbol, which you can see here with the SIG. XP didn't work here on the 18th. The Q's was a winner. Market closed the 21st. SWK was a winner, COF. Again, you see here how I'm focused on one or two picks a day. I'll tell you, the biggest days I've ever had trading is typically when I've had one good solid trade, like I said with the FDX yesterday. And typically, if you see multiple symbols, I'm having a difficult morning. So it is really important to be focused. You only need one quality gap to make money in the market. And again, also, this is not like a regular job where you get paid if you show up. If you don't have any good gaps or rate per, per the system, then you don't trade. So there were days in here Earlier in the year, we didn't have any trades. Twitter was a good gap. And again, quarterly earnings seasons are the best time to trade. We did a lot of trades in the market this year, looking back here at the results from the beginning of the year. There was a lot of longs in the market, a lot of bullish gaps in the market. I tend to focus on shorts, but we will go long in the room. I will call longs if I see a good bullish gap. DPZ was a nice gap there in February. Uh, WTW has just been flying this year. HPQ was a good one. And again, the busiest times are earnings season, and that's because you get volume, you get momentum, and all the people that are active traders, professional traders, institutions are watching the stocks when it happens to be that particular time when they report. Whether the earnings are good or bad, I don't follow fundamentals, I rate the gap, okay? Nike actually is out next week. I'm seeing the Nike here, Nike reports next week. I'll be watching that. Here was FDX from earlier in the year. That was back in March. Len was a good gap. Lulu was a nice gap. Lulu's had good moves. Here again was a market. A lot of market trades beginning of this year. Um, again, look at that, WTW. And Disney was one of those ones we've done a lot this year as well. And those were bullish gaps in Disney, most of the gaps that we've done. And some of the options were in Disney. They were calls. Twitter was a nice gap. Apple was a small one there. Apple's had a rough year, though, I will say, overall. But in April, we did do the Apple. That was a nice move in there. Big move in the Apple and XL and X. Many of the stock symbols that we trade are companies, companies you've heard of or you know. Or is it, there was Apple again that was in the first. That was before the market fell off. That was that last day of that move up before it dropped off. 
but we trade stocks that have volume, so you would know of them. MGM is another recognizable name. DDD, again, you've heard of these companies, you know most of these companies. Teva is another one. No trades in the 14th. Again, sometimes I'll look for follow through gaps. Teva is twice in here. Um, I watched FDX this morning, didn't see anything in it. But again, there will be days where we do things a couple days in a row. Baidu was the 17th and Baidu was again on the 20th. So if I see something's good, we may do it a few days in a row or even like the low. There was two trades in this on that day. That was a really nice day. That was getting into the end of May. Again, earnings season and JWN too. Took a couple days off on Memorial Day. It's a nice thing about working for yourself too. You can take time off. If you're an active trader, this is what you do. When the market's slow, you take off. And again, you get weekends off too. AEO was a good one. Doma was a good one. LLY, CRM. Again, we did LLY two days in a row. Twitter, AVGO just did not work. That was back in June. Uh, Disney didn't work that day on the 18th. Adobe worked on the 19th. There's a lot of really nice moves, though, in some of these uh, that I'm remembering back. Mew's coming up next week. This was Mew on the 26th. CAG was a good one on the 27th. Again, we did the market. BBBY was nice in July. DPZ, that was a really, really good gap. First trade loss, second trade won, but that was a nice move. CSX, and again, all these trades have a risk of about $2,000. So the advanced trader risk is around two grand per trade. Your risk should be the same or close to the same in every trade that you take. And so you're looking usually for one turnover, but many of these days were more than uh, a turnover of one. Many of the days were two turnovers or three. Again, I'm looking for the moves quick in the morning. So I'll hold something a little bit in the morning. But most of the move of 80% of the moves, the stocks make the gap happen in the morning but by 10 o'clock, 10, 15 um, in the morning. T2 was a good gap as well. August was a very solid month. No losing days. BYND was a trade. Square didn't work. NTAP worked. Q's was a good one. Two days for the Q's case. She worked. SPY was a winner. No trades on the 9th and the 13th. Was very focused during the month of August. Macy's, I'm sure we're going to be looking at um, the next quarter, too. HD was a winner. Uh, Low didn't work out, but Target did that day on the 21st. LB was a winner. Foot Luck, a really nice gap. BNW, another one. Again, if I see two really good things, we might do two things at once. Um, and Alta was definitely the gap of the month for August, as far as all around. And uh, September started out, I took some time off. AAL didn't work, Q's were break even, GLW break even, KHC was a small winner on the 17th. FDX was a really nice gap yesterday and X today. And again, being very focused, being very focused this month in September, waiting for the big moves. So as I was saying, an advanced trader risk is about $2,000 per trade. I mean, even I would consider $1,500 an advanced trader risk. So when you're starting to trade, you have to look at the size of your account, your experience level, and definitely people cannot join my live trading room where I called all these trades unless you take the Golden Gap course. I think it's important to learn the method, understand why you're doing the trades, why you're trading. The nice thing about day trading though is you can work for yourself and the moves happen quick. In these gaps, you could be out and done within the first hour of the day. If you're interested in more information and you wanna sign up for my class and learn and join and be a member of the trading room, you have to take the Golden Gap course first. Once you do, then you are eligible to join the Stock Swish group. The class tuition is $64.99. Class dates for this period for September, September 21st and 22nd. Class is 9 to 5 Eastern time. Cost of the class is $64.99 US dollars. You pay with a credit card and you must email me for the forms to do that. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Email me for the forms if you want to sign up. The trends course is Tuesday, September 24th from 11 to 3. This is a combo. You would do the golden gap and the trends, three days of classes in the next week. You save money by signing up for both at the same time. So the trends class is about long-term trends in stocks. If you'd like more information and you want to sign up, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. It has been a fantastic year, and I'm looking forward to closing out the year very strong. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.